Oh, hello there. Welcome to this show. No, seriously. Hello, everyone. It's Spencer. I'm back. I dodged Hurricane Henri. I hope all of you on the East Coast in the Northeast dodged it as well. My next guest is in New York City. I hope he dodged it as well. Uh, if you're in Long Island, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, hope you made it through the storm. But I'm back. And what did I miss? Seriously, what did I miss? Um, <laughs> uh, good to see you guys as well. Yeah, no, I, I, I was, I was never in any danger. I just all the flights were canceled. It's one of those things, you know. Uh, but I, I feel I'm feeling lost. I gotta admit, I need Joel to like fill me in on what ha- I know. We're back at all time highs. That much is clear. Uh, all right, so we'll get Joel on in like 15 minutes or so. But let's just bring on. My guest right now, Edwin Dorsey from the Bear Cave, to uh, fill us in on what went down last week. In short report land, Mr. Dorsey, uh, how did you handle Hurricane Henri? Uh, Spencer, I was able to dodge most of the hurricane, and I'm okay. A-OK. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Also, congratulations on your oh, engagement. You look you. fly. You look happier. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm feeling, yes, I Yes, I'm feeling the weight of responsibility wash over me all of a sudden. But I appreciate the 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 sentiment, uh, Mr. Dorsey. So let's talk about what happened last week. First thing I want to uh, bring on the screen here was a report from I guess this is from you, right? Uh, mm-hmm. This is Better Word to Mexico. Yeah. All right. What 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 do we got here? So Better Word to Mexico is uh, a Mexican MLM multi-level marketer that went public through a SPAC um, in March of 2020. And it's been one of the best performing SPACs up like 300% since it listed. And, wow. it, you know, its sales growth exploded. It had uh, over 100% sales growth year over year in 2020, supposedly because of the pandemic. Uh, the problem is there's a lot of like, I would say red flags that I highlighted in the Bear Caves report on the company that I think the market could be missing. For example, in 2020, the year in which they posted like 130% sales growth, they had three different CFOs that year, three different CFOs in one year. That's insane. They also switched auditors uh, right before sales growth started exploding. And the SEC sent them a really long comment letter asking them about their accounting. And in my view, their responses weren't too encouraging. So there, there's all these like potential issues, um, but the market seems to have ignored it and just taken the company at its word. So the stock's been doing really well. Uh, now I'm more skeptical, though. Okay, so you don't like the 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 number of CFOs, you, you don't like the fact that it's a SPAC in the first place. Um, this is a seven page. So it's, but to be clear, you're not short the stock or are you? I have no, I have no position in the stock. Okay. You know, when I highlight companies, I, I, I view it more as like a thousand words to uh, highlight a, a problem investors are missing or highlight how a company is hurting consumers. In this case, they're kind of like the Herbalife or Ikea of Mexico. But it just it just sometimes you get a sense it smells off. A lot of the numbers just seem too good to be true. Like they claim to have 1.3 million associates, essentially resellers of their product or people yeah. who buy it to consume it. Um, that's like more than like three times the largest employer Walmart Mexico has in the country. And it just seems like, you know, kind of odd. I talked to somebody who lived in Mexico for a while and he'd never heard of the company, although, you know, the company does exist and have real products, but it's still kind of odd. Like an investor would have never seen the company's products if it's it's as big as it claims to be. Um, you know, so it just, it just smells off. And then you get you get all these resignations. There's poor response to an SEC comment letter, um, and I, I'm a skeptic. And if you look, you know the borrow rate has historically been really high on this company. Just recently, it started to come down. You, you noted uh, uh, that it was one of the better performing SPACs. I don't I don't have the numbers handy, but I would imagine this has to be one of, if not the best performing SPAC that we have right now. This is unbelievable. $36. Also, I think you triggered 
a lot of people by mentioning Herbalife. I haven't I haven't heard of that stock probably in like a year and a half um, because no, it's not fun anymore. And now that we don't have hedge fund managers duking it out in public, but um, let's move on to a report that you uh, sent me from Wolfpack Research on SGOC is the ticker. Uh, I don't why well, I don't know what this company is. So uh, Wolfpack Research is one of the newer activists, uh, SGOC, controversial company, Hong Kong based conglomerate specializing in like lending money and like virtual reality. Uh, I, Wolfpack is pretty much alleged like this company doesn't have too much substance to it. I think they had $4 million in revenue in 2020 and $60 million in losses. And Wolfpack says it's almost like a money laundering scheme where a lot of the executives have been arrested. And my basic understanding, my, my basic personal understanding of the situation is the company would take money from an investment fund, put it in the company's coffers and then pay uh, company executives by acquiring nonsense companies that were uh, owned by the executives as a way of transferring money from the company to executives. Um, it just it's just an all around really odd company. It's not the type of stuff like I would do too much diligence on because it almost seems too obvious now. But uh, they highlighted a lot of red flags. I just want to clarify a question from uh from the the the, the chat which was what does borrow rate mean because you said that uh bmwx has a high borrow weight borrow rate and you're referring to the the basically the borrowing fee that these brokers charge if you if you want to short a stock you have to borrow the shares and you can't borrow them for free you have to pay like a borrow rate and if the borrowing rate if the borrowing rate is high that would indicate there, for whatever reason, there are not a lot of shares available to be shorted, and therefore, there can be a lack of sellers in the market. What happens when there are more buyers and sellers? Stocks go up. Is essentially. Spencer, I would also just add, you know, so usually there's a fee associated with shorting a company, typically like half a percent a year, like de minimis. Right. But for better word, in Mexico and for some other companies. It can get as high for better where it was like as high as 100% a year to borrow, mm -hmm. which is showing that somebody, some investor is paying a lot of money to short this because they're very, very, very skeptical. And typically, not always, but typically companies with high short interest and high borrow rates tend to underperform because if somebody smart is willing to spend a lot of money to take on a short position, then th there's probably a reason for that. Now the borrow rate has come down, short sellers get it wrong all the time. Right. Um, but but it's just another thing that like suggests something doesn't seem right here. Right, and the other side of, if you have a borrow rate of 100%, what's really expensive to short the stock, not many people will do it, and it creates this imba this imbalance, right? This buyers and sellers imbalance where the stock might be going up a lot because there is just no one willing to come in and short it because it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, wait. So, ba sorry, back to SGOC. Um, I got to admit, I never heard of this stock before. You mentioned it. Um, I, you know, the first thing I saw, you, the first thing you said was China. And I immediately thought, oh boy. This is interesting. Um, so uh, Wolf Research, to be clear, is short to stock. And the gist of it was, it seemed like nothing they said is like, like we've heard this before from China. We've heard all this before. Yeah, and Wolfpack Research has a history of look, exposing Chinese companies. So uh, yeah, I, I think the report, you know, hit home some real points. It's just like sometimes if there's like no substance to the business and a lot of people know there's no substance to the business, the way I view it is more it's more of a trading situation where people are going to be trying to play short squeezes and manipulation. And I always say I don't want to seat at that table. Let me focus my efforts elsewhere. Let's look at Netlist and uh, OTC uh, stock. NLST is your ticker. Uh, tell us about this. This is from Western Edge. Tell us about this report. Yeah. So what Western Edge is like this new Seeking Alpha author who's been putting out some really great reports on companies. Netlist, roughly one and a half billion dollar company, uh, OTC listed. That's up a thousand percent over the last year. 
and uh, this company has a bunch of patents and so allegedly Google has infringed on one of the patents. There's been litigation for over 10 years on this issue. And some investors think, you know, that the patent is going to be this. This is going to result in a large settlement from Google paying Netlist. Um, you know, some things to keep in mind that the author highlighted uh, is management's been selling a lot of stock. I believe the CFO sold $3 million of stock last month. So if management is selling into the hype, then, it, it, you know, is there really going to be a big payout at the end? Another thing I found hilarious is they highlighted a Barron's article titled, like, could Netless explode on the Google settlement? And that article's from 10 years ago. So this has been like a thing, you know, going on for 10 years. Um, and, and my understanding is they did uh, they did win a small settlement against another company, which has now contributed to this enthusiasm. The final thing they pointed out in their report is that they did a deal, the company did a deal with Lincoln Park Capital, which is allegedly a vulture financier. Um, and a lot of the companies associated with Lincoln Park Capital have seen big declines up to 99%. So when you you, you see insiders selling uh, an old hype story and a questionable financier, those are all an OTC listed, then that makes me a big skeptic. I have no position, but just found the article very the, the insider sells, do you know if those were part of um, uh, what is it, a 10B1 plan or were they, were they not? Do we know That's that? a great question. I don't know. One thing to keep in mind of those is all those are subject to periodic revision and review. So I think investors often put too much weight on the automatic selling 10 b five one plans. Because what you, what you could do if you're really smart or you're really sneaky and immoral is you could make an automatic 10 b five one selling plan and then just cancel it and essentially will buy the stock or a 10 b five one buying plan. And you could cancel it any time and just stop buying the like, there's a lot of ways to game the system. And that's one thing uh, the new SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, is going to be looking at. Yeah, it, it's it's a great point. I'm probably guilty of that myself. Is because you, you see, oh, 10B51, oh, it was a predetermined sale, everyone. Nothing to see here. But these guys are not dumb. They know how to game the system. They know what they're doing. So um, uh, it, it's, it, it could be one of, those, one of those rules that, like, was a good idea and has now – been manipulated and loopholed to death um but hey congratulations to everyone who bought nlst what month is this back in november of 2009 because you made your money back if you waited 12 years so uh congratulations to everyone there um edwin dorsey guys you can follow him on twitter he is uh i'll put it up on the screen here uh he's at uh the bear cave the link his links to his newsletter and his uh, Twitter account are in the description of this video. Uh, I'm sorry, he's at Stock Jabber. Let's put it, the the link up on on the screen there, if I can. I'm a little rusty. I was out for like half a day, and then I'll, now I'm rusty. So um, there is his Twitter link. He's in description. His newsletter is the Bear Cave. It's on Substack. It's also in the description. Uh, Edwin Dorsey. Uh, always a pleasure to hear from you, sir. And uh, looking forward to seeing what comes of. It seems like we're, you know, it's summer. Everyone's out. It's quiet. I hope things pick up soon. I, I do think there's a lull in earnings season of new reports, and then once earnings season is over and people have attention, they come back to life. So I hope so. I hope so. Well, Edwin, thanks a lot, man. We'll talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. All right. Uh, it is three twenty-seven. I will have Joel joining me in a couple of minutes. Here, I haven't spoken to Joel in, since Friday. Um, at least not like I've spoken to him over text, but not like, you know, talking. So uh, I, I missed his. I've missed him. I miss you guys. I miss you guys. I was so sad. I have. I, I think today may have been the first time I've ever missed a, a pre-market prep uh, that I wasn't that I, that I was supposed to be at. And obviously, you know, I go out of town and stuff and you take days off. But today may have been the first day that I was not supposed to miss that I missed. Um, I don't I don't take sick days. I don't get sick. Knock on wood. Um, and so today, today was a first for me. I did not like it. 
Uh, I, I I was able to catch some of the show. Seemed fine. <laughs> but I, I did not like missing the show. This was not, not a good day. Um, but, yeah, anyway. Okay, so I missed you guys. I, and, I, and I feel like... You know, I was out for like half a day. And I, I, you know, I was I was out for Friday afternoon. I missed this morning. My routine's all screwed up. I, I I'm feeling like lost in like the markets. Like I, I we're at a, we're back at all time highs. I guess is something. Um, but I almost need y'all to fill me in on, on on what. No, I don't have. I'm right here. I don't have COVID. Google, Google Center's truth. I'm right here. <laughs> No, <laughs> that was nothing. Um, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, great, great to see WK Harris. Great, great, great to see. Um, <laughs> they've all been late. Uh, so anyway, here's let's bring up the pro. We've got the scanner tool, scanner tool running again. Uh, this is based on the open today. Price changes from the open. Have you seen these EV stocks today just ripping? Does anyone know why? In all seriousness, like, 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 what's up with canoe? You guys see canoe today? The internet chart going. It's up thirty percent. Rounding. That's pretty amazing. Holy. I mean, just wow. I I don't even know the last time I looked at this chart. To be honest with you, hey, here's my guy. Let's start the At The Close show, shall we? All right. It is time for pre-market prep at the close. Three consecutive highs open, matched yesterday's low, and then once it took out there, that's all the breakout momentum traders needed. Joel. Spencer. I missed you. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. How you doing? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you. You should have seen me. I was like, do- I was like flying. I was like dodging the hurricane. I was like, I was oh, in, the, I was in the plane. You know, no, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. Um, but good, good to good to see you. Good to hear from you. Yeah, we, we texted, but we haven't spoken in a few days. So, um, what I miss? <laughs> oh man, you missed an incredible turnout on Saturday. That's what I, I heard. Mean, uh, Thanks to Mitch, 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 man. I tell you, he helped me uh, put it together. And uh, I was sweating bullets right to the end because I didn't have my right-hand man there, Spencer Israel. But I heard this- I heard that I've been I've been replaced as as your favorite person at Benzinga. <sighs> no, uh, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk about it offline. See me in my office. All right. All right. All right. Is uh, did did Raz make it in today? No. Did you did you get a chance to see what I did? It he must not have. I tried to get him to come on the show. If you get a chance, check out the show at eight fifty five today. All right, I I didn't get I didn't watch the end. I I watched the, like the beginning of the today's show, but I I didn't catch the end. So I'll have to catch it. Okay. Um, All right. All right, man. This market is incredible, Spencer. Yes, it's 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 resilient. Is what it is. It is so resilient. Um, resilience the word is there a better word than that than resilient i mean um dumb uh hmm. stubborn we could say strong-minded we can say uh i don't know why don't you bring up your charts i will i mean we'll take a look the s and p's are going up going to the moon i mean what else is there to say I mean, it's just a perfect storm here. You have, well, the FDA, and I mean, that was in the works. We knew that was coming. We we did Uh, know that was coming, yes. We did know that was coming. I mean, what else? I mean, you know, the dollar's looking, you know, doing okay today. Uh, Basically, with uh, the hurricanes, I don't know how they're turning out now. That's just like another stimulus package, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if we get, yeah, you, disgu- don't, don't joke about that. <laughs> a disguised stimulus package. No, we don't get that. Um, and you know, your big tech, uh, you finally get Amazon to join the rally today, Google too. But let me run it down. And I'll tell you, I was flabbergasted, <clears throat> excuse me, by uh Friday's move. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just floored with this one. I'm not just uh just riding a wave and Man, this market is unstoppable. But anyways, we obliterated the uh, pre-market high. We obliterated the old-time high made last Monday at 76.50. 
Uh, we're currently trading up 46 handles, 44.83. Can you say 4,500? I can. Helping crude. Oh, my Lord. Get speed up. Double bottom. I thought that was going to happen on Thursday, Friday. It didn't. Get the double bottom in. Crude up 340. We'll have to take a look at some of the oil stocks. Okay. I mean, even if you own gold. I mean, gold rally at two. Up 2320. Over 1800. What a great asset, right? All of a sudden, silver finally rallying up 53 cents at 23645. Oh, well, in Bitcoin land, we cross over 50K, pulling back a little bit, but still up a percent, $550 at $49.28. And Ethereum, who's kind of led, led this Bitcoin, new leader, new leader of the pack, that's up $67 at $3,324. Uh, oh, wait, does does the Jason thing, is that about the golf thing? Is that what that's about? Yes. Okay, I, I, I know... I, I just saw a message uh, about it. I didn't. I didn't. I don't from really who? Know. It for, well. I just. It was like in. It was like a tweet. I, but I. I didn't like. Uh, was, what was the like, tweet? It, it wasn't from you. It was just. A, it was a congratulations thing. Oh, I okay. It. okay. But I, I. I. I'll go back and watch. Um, you gotta watch it. Then we can talk about okay, it. Okay. Okay. I think we should start with like the IWM. Yes. Which, which is up two percent today. It is beating the other major indexes. How how much have we complained about breath when the IWM um, has been lagging, and that is not the case today. The opposite, actually. Did you see the cover of Barron's? No. Okay, what, and this is going. Well, you, you weren't here on Friday, were you? I was here in the morning. You were here in the morning. Yes. And you know how we talked about like the big tech and the big five. Yes. And being 25% of the index, we, right? Yes, yes, we did. The cover of Barron's, the unstoppable rise of big tech. <laughs> okay. The, who, from, who in this no, chat no, 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 works no, with no, Barron's no, no, and no, takes no, our content no, 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 and then rolls the presses? And you know what? They actually put the exact chart of what I've been talking about for the last 15 years. And uh, Dennis uh, caught it on Friday. Uh, talked about it on Friday. So. Uh, those things take you weeks. Know, they yeah, take yeah, days yeah. and weeks. So. I'm tired of people ripping off our content. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of it, Spencer. Put uh, an end to it. All right. Uh, but uh, anyways, yeah, a little catch up. I think people were waiting. Oh, I'm going to test to ten. I'm going to mm. get it there. I'm going to get it at the the July low. No can do. Uh, so finally, perk it up. Uh, the uh why not why not uh join the rally here don't know the iwm as well i'd say you do have a daily high to contend with at what 220 30 220 uh 26 you're at 21966 so am i gonna call that major resistance of course i'm not gonna call that major resistance i'm gonna call that uh closer to 22375 Three highs back from earlier in the month of that area. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, let's go to where Jack's head is at. Let's talk with about NVIDIA here. I'm sure you saw on uh, NVIDIA today, Joel. I mean, it's up another five percent now. We went from we went from 185. What was that Wednesday? Was that Wednesday after the close? 185. That was the post earnings number. Low 185 to we'll call it 220 in uh, three days. I, I someone asked me what I think. What do I think? I, I mean, what's there to think? I don't. It's crazy. Two twenty. Uh, I don't know. Two nineteen ninety seven. Uh, I will say, if I have to find a negative in this, which you know, I don't want to be a negative, Nelly. Uh, the day it went uh, from one ninety to one ninety eight, seventy six million. Uh, the day, uh, and then it went from 198 to 208. That was 67 million. Uh, today looks like you're well. You still got some time left. You've only traded 49 million. So I don't know if you're running out of buyers. I don't know if you'll ever run out of buyers in uh, Nvidia. I would just say if you're, you know, if you're if you're playing the weeklies. I mean, you see the level that you're at right now. You know, if you're playing the weekly 220s, and it's here on Friday. You're going to get goosed. It's not going to be anywhere near that. So really, that's the only time. If you have the, uh, you know, if you have the weeklies or whatever, you know, just be careful. I don't, I, I don't have any targets. I don't have it. I, what, what's there to say about it? Uh, gap and go. Uh, 
21 cents from the open, the low was 971 versus 950s. Stock's an absolute beast. That's what I have to say about it. All right. You mentioned it before. Let's not forget. Let's talk about oil for a second, whether you want to do the USO or the futures or whatever, ExxonMobil, whatever. Pick, pick your poison. It doesn't matter. Uh, oil uh, was not looking good there. Uh, well, I mean, frankly, it hasn't been. But uh, And that was a pretty ugly couple of weeks there for oil. And we are having ourselves a very nice day. On the oil front, uh, we are, we are. Uh, Jack Doug, does he he sold out? That's another thing you could do. Just going back to the Nvidia, you yeah. could sell like the two thirties. They probably got all kinds of juice in them. You oh, sell yeah. the weekly two thirties for I don't know. I'm just saying four bucks. Then you covered the two thirty four. Um, oil. I mean, it's just. A, I think it's more like. Uh, did you know China didn't have any COVID cases uh, yesterday? So, so that's it. Buy oil. China did anything, right? Um, it got pounded. What did it? Have? It was due for an update. Obviously, you had what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down days in a row. Snap the streak. Uh, where this rally takes us, who knows? Because this is the first day of a rally. So get some follow through tomorrow. Um, I can do my retracement things again. This one's easy. Uh, 14 point move. Take that back. Maybe get up to 69.70. Of course, you have oil numbers on Tuesday and Wednesday, inventory and supply numbers. So that could always shake mm -hmm. things up. Uh, but good day for oil. Let me see if I can find a close in this area. Uh, keep an eye on 65.21. Believe it or not, that was your close on Wednesday. Uh, the next close to contend with is sixty six thirty four. Shoot, what what did I want to talk about next? Oh yeah, I, did you see the uh, the EV stocks? They're just I I don't I wish I knew why someone just decided to buy all the EV stocks up today. But you can look at GOEV as your leader canoe, but you've got. All of them, basically. Romeo Power is up there. Uh, you, you've got um, VL. GEVO? GOEV. GOEV is your leader. Oh, well, that's a great name. I but, wish I would have known that. That's a great name. GOEV. What yeah, a great name. Uh, GOEV. You've got VLDR up 17%. Romeo is up 17%. Clean Sparks up 16%. Um, does anyone know why? Today we've we're just buying all the the EV uh, spat. What do you think? What what what's one word? Risk we, on, risk on, risk on. But also, what else? Rotation. Um, okay, okay. Right? Rotation. Yeah, you know, a little rotation. You know, maybe fly out of some winners that have gone absolutely nuts, and you know, yeah. rotate into some you know some dogs. Just run them, you know. Don't, you know, don't fall in love with them, but, uh, you know, run them for a trade. So, you know, catch the short. Short's got to cover someday. It's a lot easier to do, um, you know, when you're getting down there, just pit, hitting your bid, hitting your bid, hitting your bid, hitting your bid. But when it turns, it turns, and it's a lot harder to buy into a rising market. Yeah, just just a uh, just a stunning turnaround here. Basically, unless you're utility, unless you're in utilities or real estate, you're having a pretty and and healthcare, you're having a pretty good day today. Speaking of healthcare, uh, last I checked, BNTX was your leader of the of the vaccine stocks. Yes, it still is today. Um, but Pfizer, ha uh, oh, Pfizer actually did not hold those gains. No. I, just, I just saw that. Now, uh, BNTX too. I mean, these things have been doing okay. Uh, but the problem is, is it's always a different trip, right? The second mm -hmm. time around, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, this, uh, 50%, 395, 394, 395 on the day didn't quite get there. You just got people stuck from this big land side. Uh, let's see how Myrna's doing. I mean, you know, the appreciation, I see, uh, this was doing okay. I was hoping for 413.30 today for um, some guys that are in the pre market prep plus room. Mm. Highs 1161. So I, 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 I maintain a, a bullish cap on here until we get closer to half of that move back 426. Uh, Pfizer, we talked about Pfizer's uh, full full disclosure, long Pfizer. Right. Uh, this news was out there. They rallied this in the after hours on Friday. They tried to hold it up. They bought it, you know, 
when 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 you see stuff bought on a third for the third time on a headline, the same headline, folks, no, don't do it. I mean, first time you might get away with it. Second time you might get away with it. Maybe even a third time. But we knew this was coming. We knew this was coming down the pipe. Uh, and um, where did we get to? We had that spike when the announcement came out. 51, 30, 36. The number that I gave the PMP crowd was the all-time closing high. I said, don't worry about that high. I don't think we're going to see it. But the all-time closing high is always my focus point. And I believe that was 5042. Now, you were lamenting that a little bit when it went up to uh, 5136. But uh, Pfizer, uh, not going to post a new all-time closing high today. Long-term, <laughs> still bullish, breaking out of a 30-year base. Here's what I think we, we should all do. Uh, we'll compile a list. I'm going back to EVs for a second. We should compile a list of all these EV stocks. We should set alerts to when they go they go back above ten dollars, and then we'll pay attention because they're literally all these EV stocks are in single digits, and I want to set an alert for when they, to see when they get above ten. Uh, but none, but you know, none of them are there. Most of them aren't there. You know, uh, a couple are obviously. I'm being a little facetious, but um, I'm, I'd be curious because you know we've talked about how some of them are going to succeed. We just don't know who. Um, you know, obviously De Dennis thinks thinks Fisker, but we have no idea. Fisker's at thirteen. Well, I, for, for, oh, for, Fisker, Fisker. Yeah. So we for, don't think yeah, Jonas on that one. But but for the rest of the one, you know, for the the the, the rest of the packet that are under ten. Some of them are down to like three, three dollars, right, or lower. Um, you know, let's set alerts to see if they when they get about back above ten, if that ever happens. Let's do some ticker time from the chat. Drop your tickers in. We will take a look. BT is dropping in Lockheed Martin. Let's take a look. See at how LMT is doing. Cool. Very quiet today. Very, very quiet. Very quiet. Yes. Oh, I better watch out what I say here. Do you see what happened to Jack Morris? I yes, I did. Okay. Um, ugh. Mm. Not the place people want to be right now. Having a good day, put in a double bottom, big decline, not super sexy. I don't know. I don't think I could get crazy on the upside. Well, I don't get crazy. I am crazy. Uh, 360, uh, that's your, your three and four day highs. Uh, so let's keep an eye on that. 360 breaks above that. Got some room. Just kind of, you know, out of favor, uh, still long-term bullish trend. Uh, but, man, the monthlies aren't looking too good here. Uh, I mean, you can lean on the double bottom in a swing trade, the exact double bottom. Uh, but if this took out 53.57, you know, maybe just hang on this one to the rest of the month and maybe start a red uh, green candle for September. Uh, but not looking good. I mean, not. I mean, no wars are breaking out that I know of. And uh, that's what you need, really, for these defense stocks. Hey, did you see JD today? What a turnaround! And then, we'll, and then if we'll go from JD to Baba. But I uh, know, I know, no. I know, I know the JD pre-market prep stock of the day. Uh, here's what I have to say uh, for JD. It looks a hell of a lot better than Alibaba does, first of all, because uh, you got a monthly double bottom. And well, it's a double bottom from now. You're four bucks away from it. Last month's low, 661.65. This month's low, 61.76. Uh, it's got a ways to go. Uh, the other thing about this one is, you know, it was up 11 to 12 months after the March. Oh, well, including March, it was up 12 out of 13. Hit that high. It was down five out of six. We're probably still going to get a red candle on the month, but... Man, good numbers, not being rewarded. Yeah, uh, we'll say the high too in this today uh, coincides with another daily high at 66.29, 66.30. You get above that, you get a little move up, uh, a little bit higher in JD. But man, a lot of overhead supply in this one. Everyone trying to mm -hmm. uh, pick a bottom. Okay, wait. Two people ask about Baba. I don't even know. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. I looked at it in the morning. I took an eye off it, and then when it was like five bucks off the low, 157, 158, I'm like, ah, I'll pass. Yeah. And now it's up 254, 160, 50. I've seen Baba pull this trick before. I mean, 
Yeah. I, I think I think you get a little a little pop here in Baba. <laughs> I oh. mean, it's already it's already popped eight bucks uh, off the low. So I don't know. Maybe get a little pullback, get it closer to that one fifty two eighty. But you could have a nice bottom there for a few days in Alibaba. Um, what about? Oh, here's one. I I don't know how big is this one. Okay, I don't actually know if I know this one. You know DAC, Detroit Athletic Club. That's the one. Did no, you know? That- did you know that the chef from the Detroit Athletic Club? was the chef for the men's and women's Olympic basketball team. Really? Yeah. I don't know where I read that. Wait, like uh, like like this year? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where did I see that? Uh I read something. Huh. Not, I think I, I actually I, I, I read I've the never, newspaper this week. I've never been allowed in there before, so I Really? Yeah. I have. I've been there a few <laughs> times. Actually they, they you don't want hear a good me. quick story? Sure. Um when was this? I can't remember. It might be almost two years ago. One of my buddies is a member there. Uh-huh. And uh, they have different, they have a pool in there. And you know, they have a pool like up on the ninth I, floor. I did know that. Yes. Yeah. And they do some wild, uh, uh, they do this crazy water polo game. Mm. And, and my buddy, part, but then they have a guest speaker. And the guest speaker was the guy that shot Osama bin Laden. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I went to watch him speak there. So, uh, oh, Detroit uh, Athletic Club. That's yeah. not where we talk tangents. Yeah. Uh, why not go for the old time high here? 85 96, 82 19. Big bar today. A lot of green bars. Maybe do for a breather. Is there news on this one? Oh, Donna? Is it, what is it? What do they do? Uh, cares, it, right? It's a uh, industrials. They are, oh, they do container ships. Okay. I oh I like I'm now I'm interested. <laughs> they do oh no I guess that's why it's gone from twenty to eighty two. <laughs> why in this year? Because they do container ships. Yeah, everyone needs those. Oh. Huh? Uh, oh, hey, who who brought this up on the chat? Where were you nine months ago, man? <laughs> you know what? Did, with but, this no, one, Joe was... Fowley, Joe Fowley, where were you nine months ago, Joe? I I could have used you. I wish it would. Uh, uh, I mean, this one I would have. I wish you would have asked me about it in the morning because then maybe I would have looked at it because it had a pair of highs in the same area, right? It's seventy. Yeah. It's called seventy-seven and a quarter. Opened up right at that. It what was the close too? Close to seventy-six forty-one. You got a little bit of a gap fill. It was off the races. Good volume today too. Good. Not great volume on Friday. Good volume today. So new buyers coming into the market. Uh, if you have a target at 8220, take it. Uh, there's really nothing in here until I think it's the old time high, and that is uh 8596. Now you got to uh you got to go and drill down on your dailies if you're looking for an intermediate number between that and the old time high. I don't I don't have time to do that for you right now. But if you come to pre market prep plus in the morning, I will do that for you. What do you think of of rack space RXT? We haven't talked about rack space for a little while Wait, here on, on this show. RXT wasn't did no, they change RXT, their stuff? R- RXT T is and Tom. Oh, uh, RXT. I think, I think that changed. I thought there was a rack space before. Ooh, what happened? Bad earnings. Uh, yeah, they had. Well, that was that was two weeks ago now. Um, yeah. Well, uh, the good news is, you know, there's a buyer at thirteen right now. And it's trying to get away from 13. 13 is the low of the move. 1308, 1307, 13, 13, 13. So there's your support. The problem is, is you're not lifting out of here. You want to see that. So you might, uh, what do you got? Three highs on the upside, right around 1350. Oh man, it's just a slow mover. Maybe set an alert at 14 if you want to buy it on strength, but there's definitely some big boys not buying down here in the lower 13 handle, and you don't know if they're going to move up on it or not, right? And um, so that's it. Forming a base at the old time low. We got Best Buy tomorrow morning and Nordstrom's tomorrow after the close. Wow. Uh, if last week was any indicator, it was an amazing quarter for Best Buy, most likely. Yeah, I mean, you never know, right? right? 
Right. High expectations. Yes. They better come in and blow it away. Oh, yes. Uh, you got your monthly support, uh, double bottom on the monthlies, 107. So if you got a whoosh down and, you know, you're trying to pick it up on the cheap, there's your 107. Uh, very, very tough chart here since June. Uh, you made that old time high June and it's just been like the accordion chart here. So mm. some big days, some down days. Uh Coin flip going into the report. Uh, if you get a big spike, you could see 116 and 118 as potential stopping points. Wow, Matt Miller, look good call on the Cisco chart, Matt Miller, because Cisco, yeah, we are higher than we were back in 2019. Right? Are we not? Yeah, yes, we yeah, are. Wow, what a three day run from Cisco. Full disclosure, I own Cisco, been oh. owning it for like a hundred years. So I probably got a little profit in it. That's a very unusual move off earnings. And I'm not going to call it topping it, but 55 to 59 in four days in Cisco. I mean, what's the monthly range here? The monthly range here uh, in uh, April, $3. May, $4. June, $4. July, $3. And you're working on a four-point range here. So... Looking on your standard deviations, this move is way out there, but man, oh man. I mean, keep an eye on the close today. Let's see, 58.70. Maybe finally someone want to put an end to this move at 59. Once again, another up day uh, under the volume from the last. Uh, you had a big volume on the day, I believe, the day of earnings. Then the next day, you had the big volume now tapering off a little bit. Do you have enough buyers out there, new buyers, new buyers to take it to 60? George says, sell, sell, sell. Joel, I don't sell. <laughs> uh, Support.com, SPRT. This is uh, – who, who, who pitched this? This is – um. Uh, is this a Luke Jacoby stock? Support.com? It might be. I can't remember. I'm blanking on who pitched this. Somebody pitched this recently. I think it was Luke Jacoby. Uh, SPAC? No, I don't know. Uh, I... Maybe it wasn't Luke. Somebody pitched. Uh, no, not a SPAC. Not a SPAC. No. Uh... Anyway, I don't know. It's a crazy chart. Crazy chart. I just thought that was funny. And we have a look Big at here. Update. Oh, here, here, oh. here. Uh, forget, forget. Do we got some news. No. News me, Spencer. Um, What's going news. on? What's going on? There's something going on. Uh, some, some options. What do we got? Some options activity today. Um, no, no, I'm talking immediate news. Immediate news, mm, right? Uh, now. You know, you know what it is. I bet. Let's let's look at the float. When in doubt, look at the float. I bet you it's a low floater. It is nine million shares. Done. Let's look here. I just talk about the S and P, Spencer. We just dropped. Oh, what that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, you didn't. You weren't clear. Um, with news, you I. There is, there is, there could have been a uh, an update to the imbalance feed. I saw a slight sell imbalance like ten minutes ago, but um, nothing, nothing, nothing to set off any alarm bells. Let's take a look. See. Oh, here. but I mean, now, now that new time, old time closing high is in jeopardy. In je do you hear what happened to the guy that uh, uh, that was supposed I to take? I did. I we did. Don't talk about that either. Uh, seventy four fifty is what you need to uh, uh, post an all time closing high. These guys say it was a short squeeze in the support at uh, support dot com. So right. if that's the case, then you know what I think about it. But you all know right. what I want to check? What about Sarepta? That's S B R T, right? That's What's Sarepta it. doing? Wait, what's your up to? SPRT? You got it. Oh, wait. Wait. SRPT. Man. Oh, you got it. I'm sorry. SPRT. SPRT is support SRPT. Wow. Sarepta. Man, oh, man, oh, man. There's a biotech stock yeah. you wish you didn't own. Yeah. Look at that. Just sitting on all these monthly lows. I mean, it's trying. You got monthly support, but they must not have anything in the pipeline. Mm, I'm sure they do. Hey, uh, it, uh, I saw you mention chat. Cara Therapeutics, CARA stock is halted. Will resume at 4:15 Eastern time. They got FDA approval for a drug, so the stock it, it, we've been halted on Cara for over an hour, um, and we're gonna come out of the halt here in about 17 minutes or so. 
Um, so yeah, ah, FDA, who knows? Yeah, yeah, FDA approval for a hemodialysis uh, drug, and you got that. Anyone watching that? 415 is your magic number or magic. Just be art. aware. Yeah, just be aware that some people are anticipating this approval. Two day move, 1215, got over 1250 to 1450. So I don't know. You might be late to this one. Not sure if it's a sell the news yet. See where the pop is. Uh, let's give you a monthly number. A monthly number, folks. Keep an eye on 15 bucks. We're pretty close to that. That was your high in June. Things really open up over 15. Uh, okay, we got a minute left in the session. Uh, we, you know, what's interesting is, you know, we had that that downtick just there in the S and P's, but uh, a little bit. It's not really pronounced, but when you look at like the Nasdaq, it's way more pronounced. So um, yeah, probably just a solid balances, a little register ringing, nothing major. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are, we're quiet. Uh, we're still going to end up, like I said at the top of the show, with the Russell being your winner of the day, but not by as much as it was. Uh, it's just a great, just a great day overall. It's all you can really say about it. We're up in every sector other than utilities and real estate. Uh, oh wait, no X. There's one uh, XLP is in the red by a smidgen, but um, yeah, I mean, just a great, just a great, great day across the board. Yeah. Um, yep. I, I, I guess, uh, and and I, I did, I did actually miss this. I, I didn't, I didn't see what the Fed had said, but I guess the Fed had said something um about they they uh dampened expectations a little bit for um for 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 tapering i don't know we'll find out um i guess though I, I i'd heard the fed had said something but anyway there's your bell we are closed and all time highs That's yep boring. all time closing hi all right spencer uh glad you're back and uh see you bright and early tomorrow we will see you tomorrow joel everyone smash that like button please how many likes are we at here? There's Joel. There he is. Smash that like button. Please remember all the information from our show, all of our shows, our, our whole channel, meant to be used as informational purposes, not for investing or trading advice. Everyone have a great rest of your day. Money Mitch is live right now. We're going to we're gonna end and redirect straight to that. And um, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.